a city is about to perform surgery on itself. In Adelaide, South Australia, engineers are preparing for the biggest and most complex operation in the state's history. The goal is to create a 78-kilometer-long non-stop highway running straight through the heart of the city, a vital artery with no traffic lights. The final stage of this mega-project will cost an eye-watering $15.4 billion. To achieve this, an army of workers and giant machines will dig up 3.9 million cubic meters of earth, enough to fill the entire Melbourne Cricket Ground Stadium more than twice. They will build massive tunnels deep beneath homes, businesses and rivers. But this is the story of more than just a road. It's a story of incredible ambition and terrifying risk. How do you dig a superhighway under a living city? And what happens if you get it wrong? To truly understand why a city would decide to bury a highway, you need to feel the frustration of a typical Adelaide driver. For decades, the main route connecting the city's north and south has been a road called South Road. But calling it a corridor is generous. It's more like a long, painful parking lot. Imagine trying to drive just 10 kilometers and being stopped by 21 different sets of traffic lights. Every day, over 100,000 vehicles, from family cars to massive freight trucks carrying goods from the port, crawl along this route. City planners saw this problem coming as far back as the 1960s. They dreamed of a single flowing motorway, but turning that dream into reality has been a slow, piecemeal process. For years, the government has tackled the problem one small section at a time. They built projects like the South Road Superway, an enormous 2.8-kilometer elevated road, and the Torrens to Torrens project, which sunk a portion of the road into a trench. While these sections helped, they were like putting band-aids on a broken bone. Each new non-stop section simply funneled all the traffic into the next bottleneck, creating new traffic jams further down the road. The final missing piece in this 78-kilometer puzzle is the most difficult of all. It's a 10.5-kilometer stretch right through the city's most developed suburbs, from the River Torrens to Darlington. This is the T2D project. For years, engineers debated how to build it. Going over was too disruptive, and going through it would mean demolishing thousands of properties. They were left with only one terrifyingly complex option. They had to go under. This decision set the stage for one of Australia's most ambitious engineering challenges, a project that would test the limits of modern technology. But the machines they need to pull this off are unlike anything the city has ever seen. The plan is to create a massive underground network, essentially hiding a six-lane superhighway from sight. This isn't just one long tunnel, it's a complex system of two separate, parallel tunnels, one for northbound traffic and one for southbound. Each tunnel will be wide enough for three lanes of traffic, allowing cars and trucks to travel at highway speeds deep beneath the city streets. The underground journey is split into two main sections, a 2.2-kilometer northern tunnel and a much longer 4-kilometer southern tunnel. These two massive tunnels will be connected by a 4.3-kilometer open-air motorway, which will be lowered below the existing ground level to keep it hidden and reduce noise. To carve out these enormous caverns, engineers are bringing in the titans of the construction world. Tunnel Boring Machines, or TBMs. Three of these colossal machines, built by the world-renowned German company Herrenknecht, will be used for the main tunnels. Each one is a staggering 100 meters long, the length of a professional soccer pitch, and weighs thousands of tons. At the very front is the cutterhead, a 15-meter diameter spinning disc of solid steel studded with tungsten carbide cutters. For comparison, that's as wide as a four-story building is tall. The TBM works by pressing this spinning face against the rock and soil with immense hydraulic pressure, grinding it away. These machines are a specific type called Earth Pressure Balance, or EPB-TBMs. This technology is incredibly clever. Instead of leaving an open hole at the front, the machine keeps the excavated ground-up rock in a pressurized chamber right behind the cutter head. This creates a sort of plug, using the earth itself to support the tunnel face and prevent the soft ground from collapsing in. It's like keeping a cork in a bottle, providing constant support while the machine moves forward. As the TBM inches forward, the ground-up rock, or spoil, 
is carried away from the cutter head by a giant screw conveyor. It then gets dumped onto a conveyor belt that runs the entire length of the machine, taking the spoil all the way to the tunnel entrance. But digging is only half the job. The back half of the TBM is a sophisticated construction factory. As the machine moves forward, it leaves behind a perfectly formed concrete-lined tunnel. Giant curved segments of precast concrete are transported to the front on special vehicles. A massive robotic arm called an erector picks up each segment and carefully places it into position, forming a complete ring. Each ring is made of seven segments, plus a final keystone piece that locks it all together. Once a ring is complete, the TBM uses hydraulic rams to push off the newly installed ring, propelling itself forward to start the process all over again. It's a slow but relentless cycle. Dig, excavate, build and push. While these three giants carve out the main tunnels, they won't be alone in the dark. A pair of smaller, 4-metre diameter TBMs will be working alongside them. Their crucial job is to dig the cross passages. These are smaller tunnels that connect the main northbound and southbound tunnels every 120 metres. In an emergency like a fire or major accident, these passages allow people to quickly and safely escape into the other tunnel. Of course, all that digging creates an enormous problem. What to do with 3.9 million cubic metres of rock and soil? To handle this mountain of material, a highly organised system has been designed. At the main construction sites, large enclosed spoil sheds will be built. The conveyor belts from the TBMs will dump the spoil directly into these sheds, which helps contain the immense amount of dust and muffles the noise. From there, a carefully coordinated fleet of covered trucks will be running day and night, transporting the material to a dedicated 86-hectare spoil reuse facility at Gilman, near Adelaide's port. The logistics are staggering, requiring thousands of truck movements that must be managed carefully to avoid creating even more traffic chaos on the city's local roads. But the biggest challenges are the ones you can't see. The ground under Adelaide is a geological nightmare for tunnelers. In some areas, it's soft, wet sand and clay. In others, it's hard bluestone and limestone. The path of the tunnels also crosses several dormant fault lines. While the risk of an earthquake is low, the ground around these faults is fractured and weak. Engineers have to design the concrete tunnel segments in these zones to be stronger and slightly more flexible, allowing them to shift slightly without cracking if the ground ever moves. Then there's the water. Digging so deep means you're often below the water table, and the tunnels are at constant risk of flooding. A massive system of pumps will work 24-7 to dewater the construction sites. But engineers have to be extremely careful. Pumping out too much groundwater too quickly can cause the ground level on the surface to sink, a process called subsidence, which can crack building foundations and roads. All of this must be done while navigating a hidden underground maze of existing infrastructure, including sewers, gas lines, and the foundations of bridges and buildings. To protect the city above, hundreds of sensors will monitor noise and vibration in real time. If vibrations get too strong near a historic building, for example, an alert is sent, and the TBM operators can slow down or adjust their methods. Once this underground world is carved out, it will be transformed into one of the most technologically advanced road systems in the country. The tunnels will be a managed motorway. A central control room will be the brain of the operation, with staff monitoring hundreds of CCTV cameras around the clock. The system uses artificial intelligence to automatically detect incidents. If a car stops or swerves, the system instantly alerts the operators, who can dispatch help immediately. In case of a fire, a deluge system can release massive amounts of water, while powerful jet fans in the ceiling control the direction of smoke, pushing it away from people and towards ventilation shafts. This ensures that even deep underground, drivers are constantly being watched over by a system designed for maximum safety. A project of this magnitude comes with a truly colossal price tag. The final budget for the T2D project is set at $15.4 billion. It's an enormous investment, split 50-50 between the Australian Federal Government and the South Australian State Government.
the timeline for this massive undertaking is just as long as its price tag, with major construction starting in 2025 and the planned opening to traffic not scheduled until 2031. But the true cost of this project can't just be measured in dollars. To clear the path for the tunnel entrances, ventilation buildings and construction yards, a total of 524 properties, including family homes and local businesses, will be purchased by the government and demolished. Entire streets and parts of neighbourhoods will be wiped off the map. This massive cost in both money and community disruption has led to significant criticism. For years, opponents have pointed to the project's own economic modelling. An early analysis suggested the project had a benefit-cost ratio of just 0.7. In simple terms, this means that for every dollar spent on the project, the expected economic benefit to the community, in things like time savings and productivity, would only be 70 cents. While the government has since released updated figures claiming a positive return, many economists and community groups remain skeptical, arguing that there are more effective ways to spend $15.4 billion. There is an ongoing debate about whether this money would be better invested in upgrading Adelaide's public transport network, which could move more people with less environmental impact. There are also fears that this non-stop superhighway will simply move the city's worst traffic jam to a new location, creating massive bottlenecks where the six lanes of tunnel traffic are suddenly forced to merge back onto suburban roads at the southern end. What do you think? Is this a necessary investment in the future or a multi-billion dollar gamble? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments. If you found this journey into underground engineering fascinating, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to Ultimate Mega Builds, and be sure to hit that notification bell so you can join us for our next exploration of the world's most incredible engineering projects.